Hello. Thank you for having me. My name is Victory Brown, and I flew eight hours plus from Lagos, Nigeria, here to Berlin. And it's also my first time here, and I'm excited to talk about something that I love most, um, which is like design and community and open source. So, um, yeah, I'm a design researcher at Superbloom. I know you've seen Superbloom. We talk about design a lot. We love design. <laughs> so, um, yeah. The uh, topic is multi-face designers as multi-face contributors, and I will be using more of my story and my experience from the African ecosystem to talk more about my not linear path to open source. Um, I was speaking to a colleague of mine, and I spoke to her about how I started working in open source. And usually some people know what they want to do before they get into a space. I did not. I just heard my friends talk about technology and tech a lot. Um, I have a background in English studies. I wanted to be a professor. I wanted to teach English in school. Um, but now I talk about open source design, which it's not so bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, 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 heard, I had friends, Samson, um, I think he's popular also in the open source space. He kept talking about open source and technology and software. And I'm like, OK, what do I do? Um, I got into the space confused. I got in as a newbie. There was no path. I mean, like I got in and nobody was saying, you need to do this to find yourself or you need to be here to find yourself. So there was no path for me. I was confused, no mentor or direction. And after a while, I said, I, I noticed it was very technical. It was a very technical environment. So I said, okay, how do I fit and what should I do? And I like, okay, I could start learning how to write codes. I wrote HTML, CSS and I said JavaScript, and I'm like, nah, <laughs> this really isn't my thing. But I did fix a couple of bugs. And then I found design. I got introduced to design by a friend, um, Perry. She introduced me to the open source core team. And there I met Earl, and they helped me in the open source community, introduced me to the UX working group, and I started contributing. By contributing, I mean I attended meetings and kept short for one year. Uh, so I looked around for a while. I found a project that needed help. Um, it was to create a UX um, interview guide for scientists to use a, a particular technology. Again, I, was, I just left writing code. I didn't really know or I was not grounded yet in design. So I left it. Instead of asking for help, I, I absconded from the project. I, I ghosted the maintainer <laughs> because I did not know what to do. And then I was like, I still want to be here because I found people doing stuff. Um, and I'm like, what can I do to be better and actually to make use of this opportunity? And then I started looking for mentorship and I reached out to a couple of folks in the community to ask for help. Um, yeah, so I seeked mentorship. And then in the next two years, I found, or at that same year, I found the Indian Open Source Foundation, which was the first project I contributed to. Um, I was the only designer there. I said design icon, so I was learning and also contributing to open source, learning design and contributing to open source. I found this on the open source, the design net community, and I found some African designers who were also inter interested in contributing to open source, and we all packed into, I think we were like five, and we just packed into the community, and um, because I was there first, they gave me that authority to you know delegate and give our work so i was i was interested more in the interface then and so i shared the work amongst my friends who were there as well some people designed icons some people did ux and we just found a way to do some work there and after that i figured out there were some things that i didn't know that i think i should know which had to do with experience right as much as the interface looked good i think that there were so many so many things that were missing about it and we're building a learning management system which is something that i have come to be more interested in like the educational aspect of things. So um, I got into UX research and I started doing a couple of UX research work and I found Linux Foundation Public Health. And the first project I contributed to was Herald. Um, it's a COVID-19 tracing application where I met a bunch of devs who were doing dev stuff and needed me to make sense of the dev stuff that they were doing. So I just used Myro to simplify some of the work that they did and it wasn't really like an intensive UX research work, but I think I did a pretty good job because it, it, it worked. <laughs> and then um, Open Source Community Africa, which is commonly known as Oscar Fest, is a community in Africa to help um, advocate more about open source and bring in more Africans to open source. I gave a first talk there about how I contribute to open source. I wrote an article that is still in use and have brought like 
tons of Africans into open source, and I'm proud of that. And then I, I decided that, okay, to be more um, connected to the community, I could do something about like using chapters to bring in more people. And I reached out to the community, the open source design community, and I started the Open Source Design Africa chapter. Um, although we did, we, did, we did work, we did do some talks, um, we noticed that the challenge is not just about finding open source projects. Designers there need to understand what design is outside of interface. The way we are brought up and what we're exposed to, we all think it's about UI, UI, UI. And even at that, we're only exposed to a certain level of um, software or products. And what is very common there is like fintech related products, e-commerce. And um, I think my experience in open source exposed me to software design. And when I mean software, I mean like the more intimate parts of the technology, not just like the interface. And I wanted to share more about that. And I started hosting training sessions on how designers could contribute to open source. And also another thing that we did was the Chaos, Chaos Projects founded a chapter called Chaos Africa. And I contribute there as a researcher as well. And then I also contribute to Sustain OSS as a co-organizer, which is like a community that talks about sustainability of open source projects. And also um, the podcast for sustained open source design. And four years later, I am an advocate for open source design. I organize design events in Africa. We have had like a couple of events. Um, also, even before the African event, I have participated in other open source related organizations and the events. I'm a design coach at Superbloom and a program and educational manager with Design Matters X design matters. And now um, for this year, my goal is to design a pathway for open source designers because when I started, this was my challenge. I had no path. And right now, I think I have to an extent understood that there is a direction that people could follow and I want to help out in any way that I can. So here's a word to product owners, developers, and maintainers because to an extent, uh, you don't help. But <laughs> I'm hoping after this talk, we'll have to figure out a way to collaborate more. Uh, I want to know that designers bring creative and analytical reasoning to projects, right? Um, do not box designers in your community or just, I think when we started, a lot of the projects that wanted us were excited because we could design swags, we could design t-shirts, we could design websites, but we want to do more than that. We want to be a part of the project from the ground, from the product development cycle, from the onset down to the finished work. We want to be able to test this product with users of open source and all of that. So that's what we want to do. And it's a good thing that we are reaching out to you as product owners or developers because there are so many ways we could help. We could conduct research. Um, I know that before now, open source technology is being used, like people use the technology, right? Um, despite the look. But imagine if we had a very good look and a very good experience, you would have more user conversion. And that's something that a lot of products or people don't really think about because they have, they have like 12K forks and stars on GitHub. And they're like, oh, we're good to go. Not really. I mean, if you do some testing, you will find out that there are a lot of gaps and issues with that particular product, but designers would help you identify these things and ways to fix them. Um, another way that we could do with our multi faith skills is we could also design programs. I know one of the things that we do at Superbloom is we facilitate workshops that help you do value proposition, project um, scoping and all of that, so we can help you um, design tailored programs for your projects. It could be programs for your developers, programs for the community members, and also we could help you like um, design or help you visualize what you want your project to look like in short term or in long term. Those are things that I think open source projects should do more is make their roadmap more open so people know what you want to do, why you want to do this, and they know how they can contribute and be a part of that particular project. So. Um, I noticed that there are some designers here who have been in the space for over 10 years, five years, and I am grateful that you're here because I have a couple of things to say to you. So first thing is what you could do to help, um, not just me, not just the African ecosystem, but other junior designers who are interested in being a part of open source as designers is be intentional about design in the sense that you have a project that you're contributing to, you have been there for a long time, and um, you're the only designer there. I don't think it's fair. <laughs> I mean, for yourself, I mean, you, it could help you to, you know, release some of the work tension if you have 
other designers helping you. So you could preach about open source design just like I'm doing because you have more experience, you know the ins and the outs of the project and how designers could be a part of that project. Another way you could do that is create design documentation on how designers can contribute to open source. There are a couple of open source projects that have design documentation, which is really helpful. And some, although it's available, it's not so much uh, useful to us because there are still very technical terms that designers don't understand. So if you can find ways to simplify those things, it will be awesome. Uh, my first open source project that I contributed to was Oscar Fest. And we have, like, there was a design documentation where there were assets that you could use. There was a way to go about using those assets, which was really helpful to us as well. Um, I, I borrowed this word from... <laughs> from someone I spoke to yesterday said be a design champion if you are in a community you can champion design and also like advocate for the need that designers could be a part of it get more junior designers to contribute and it's not just about we building the software for you if you look at it from a value um, view you are giving back to these underrepresented groups, if I may use that term. Because like I said, there are certain technologies that we are not exposed to, we are not accessible to, but with open source, we can do that. But we also need someone to guide us, to work us through how to get these products, how to use them, how to contribute to them. So this is for project owners, how you could do that. Be intentional about design again, but this time you make room for design. The next thing is design documentation on what designers can do. Right? As a project owner, you know best on what you need, what your project needs, and how you want to go about that. You can put a word out there. You don't need to have it structured in a way, but you could just say a word and designers would flock your tweets on LinkedIn or wherever it is. Have a design team. Building a design team is not easy, but um, I think if you think about it, it becomes easy. The first, the challenge, the biggest challenge is having it in mind that you want to do this. You want to build a design team because you want a better product. You want a better experience for people who use your product. And finally, design is integral for user experience and project success. So that's something that we should um, look at. So because I say this doesn't mean uh, you should overwork designers when they come into your project because, oh yeah, yeah, I heard that you're multidisciplinary, you can do everything, you should do this, do this, and do that. No, that's what we're saying. Um, but yeah, some designers are in organizations where they tend to do a lot and that can lead to burnout. And not just designers, project owners as well. I think there are some open source softwares that have like limited contributors or just like three people managing it. So one of the ways that you can manage burnout from multitasking is to assign tasks way before the deadline. So you don't need, um, let's say you want to fix an error right now or there's an issue and then you're like, okay, we need this fixed in, in two seconds, we need this fixed in five minutes. People, remember open source is voluntary and people have things that they do outside of open source. And even if they don't, they also have personal things that might take their time off. So assign tasks way before deadline, create a system for managing design tasks or a task in general, right? Um, also offer clear priorities to avoid multitasking and delegate. I think this is not something that most people tend to do a lot, but um, delegating is good. And the reason why most people don't delegate is because they don't feel comfortable handing over a project to somebody because they don't think they're competent enough. So to fix that, invest in mentorship, be a champion and lead mentorship, take on junior designers and teach them how you want these things to be done, right? Um, it takes away the pressure. And then also define roles and responsibilities for the design team so they know what they do. So this is like screenshots of what, it's just a few, what we've been able to accomplish with design in Africa. Um, so Kingsley here works as a designer for Chaos. He came in through with my article and now he's doing really amazing things for the Chaos Project and All in Africa Project as well. Um, there are some folks that we've been able to get into outreach through uh, mentorship. I did like a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with this person and they got into outreach and I'm very proud about that. Um, someone I also brought into open source got a job from contributing to open source. So you see, it's not just about we helping the project. Projects also help us in some way. And we're really excited about that. So yeah, summary, we want to encourage more collaboration between developers and designers. Um, designers don't only have to be the mentors, developers as well. I know that there are developers who have some challenges with 
clearly explaining what things are. But yeah, we could we could work towards a, a more collaborative um, society or ecosystem where we work together. Host more design or non correlated events. I was really excited when I saw first backstage design because first backstage had rejected my talk a couple of times. <laughs> but yeah, first backstage design accepted it, which is good. Um, invest in more mentorship. And also, yeah, the Pempot folks are doing good with the Pempot Fest, which is like for designers as well. Uh, invest in more mentorship. Advocate in your, in your project, advocate for uh, design considerations. Um, also provide resources and platforms for sharing design knowledge. You could work with us to create resources. It's something that I want to do this year is create like more resources for people to understand best practices for contributing to open source as designers and also like for projects to be able to accept designers, manage them properly, sustain the contributions and not overwork them. So what's next? Ideas and explorations this is like what I'm thinking about. Um, one is we want to relaunch the open source design community. I know a couple of us are in the community, but it's not as active as it used to be. The forum is a bit quiet. And that's because we haven't really started doing stuff or we're doing stuff individually, but I want us to do things together as a community because we would have more reach that way. The next thing is to relaunch the Open Source Design Africa chapter. So please, the people that I have connected with, you see me in LinkedIn asking you to host workshops. Please don't say no. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Oscar Fest is happening this year again. Oscar Fest is like the conference event. Uh, we want to see how we can host an open source design clinic, focus on open source design, because again, as much as it's open source, we have very technical talks, so we want to be more design focused. Uh, we want to design more outreach programs specifically for open source designer, just like Google Summer of Dogs, Google Summer of Codes. So if your community or your project is interested in something like this, uh, we could work together to do that. Fund more designer thons. If you don't have the money but you have the idea, sell, give it to us and then we'd, we'd look for funds to work on that. But I think funny more designer funds would help more designers not only contribute but have things that they can add to their portfolio. I mean, I have most of the projects I have on my portfolio are from contributing to open source. So that has given me experience that I need and I would not have gotten if I was not contributing to open source. More things, um, people who have years and years of experience com contributing to open source, I know that you have a lot of things to say. We would like for you to publish a guide <laughs> on open source design practices and um, for projects, communities, and individuals to adopt while contributing to open source. And also design recognition models for non-code contributors. It encourages people when, um, con when con their contributions are being recognized. I know we have like GitHub star projects, but that's like far off. I mean, just giving badges, swags, or saying, making a post with your social media, oh, say thank you to this person. And it makes us feel good, so yeah. Um, that's all for my talk, and I hope it was insightful. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so any questions that people want to ask? Way in the back. Can I meet you halfway? Thank you so much. I really appreciated the slide that said, uh, like, actions to be done. It just set, I mean, it set my brain going and I'm not even a designer. Um, one of the things on that was um, providing resources. And there's this uh, type of like resource called like awesome lists that's like on GitHub and for uh, developers typically. Um, but I've also heard that like forcing designers to go to GitHub is probably not the best, best way. Do you have ideas on ways to provide some of those resources? Um, and if not, just what should we be thinking about while we're coming up with those ideas? Uh, I had a call before this session with a designer from Africa, he's Kingsley. Uh, we're working on creating a resource. It's not gonna be on, on, it's not gonna be on GitHub, but it's called NoCoast is no code open source. So for people to get open source resources, it's just you as a designer or as a developer, you can publish your resource on there. Because I asked him for a link to their design documentation. It's like, oh no, it's a Google Doc, it's not on GitHub. And why? Because again, designers don't like to go to GitHub. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, that's one of the ways that I know. And also it could be in the communities, it could be public, you could publish it online, um, posting on LinkedIn or posts 
directly on public forum like the open source, especially if there are design resources, you could post on the open source design.net forum. And I'm sure that would also help to kick the forum again. And also, if I think of more ideas, I would probably share because this year I plan to be more vocal and visible with work. So, yeah, I will be doing that. Thank you so much. Thank you.